This is the story of our alley, its stories rather. I have witnessed only the most recent events, those of my own time, but I have recorded all of them the way our storytellers told them. Everyone in our alley tells these stories just as they heard them in coffee houses or as they were handed down for generations. These sources are my only basis for what I'm writing. Most of our social occasions call for storytelling. Whenever someone's depressed, suffering, or humiliated, he points to the mansion at the top of the alley at the end opening out of the desert and says sadly, that's our ancestor's house. We are all his children and we have a right to his property. Why are we starving? What have we done? Then, he'll tell the stories and cite the lives of Adam and Gabal, of Rifa and Kassem, some of our allies, great men. But this ancestor of ours is a puzzle. He's lived longer than any man dreams of living. His long life is the stuff of Proverbs. He has dwelled aloof in this house for long ages, and no one has seen him since he isolated himself up there. The stories of his old age and isolation are bewildering, and perhaps fantasy and rumor have helped to make him so. Anyway, he was called Gabalawi, and our alley was named for him. He owns everything and everyone in it, and everything in the desert around it. Once I heard a man say about him, he created our alley, and from our alley grew Egypt, the most important place in the world. He lived here alone when the place was empty and desolate, and became master of it by force and is standing with the ruler. There will never be anyone like him again. He was tough. The wild beast dreaded his very name. And I heard someone else say, he was truly noble. He was unlike other leaders. He didn't collect any protection money or behave arrogantly. He was kind to humble people. Then came a time when some people talked about him in a way unsuited to his rank and dignity. You know how people can be. I always found talk about him fascinating, never boring. How often that moved me to stroll around his tall mansion, trying to catch a glimpse of him, always in vain. How often I stood before his massive gate, gazing at the stuffed crocodile mounted above it. How often I sat in the Mukatam desert, not far from its high walls, able to see no more than the tops of the mulberry, sycamore, and palm trees enclosing the house, and the closed windows that disclosed no sign of life. Is it not sad to have a grandfather that we never see and who never sees us? Is it not strange of him to disappear inside that locked mansion while we live in the dirt? If you're curious about what brought us to this, here are the stories. You will hear all about Adham, Gabal, Rifa, and Kassem, though none of it will soothe or comfort you. I said that no one had seen him since he secluded himself. That didn't bother most people, as all they ever cared about was his estate and as much talked about 10 conditions. This was how the dispute started before I was born whose ferocity has only grown with the passing of generations up until today and tomorrow. So I don't want any bitter ridicule when I speak of the close family ties that bind the people in our alley. We were and still are one family, which no stranger has penetrated. Everyone in our alley knows everyone else, men and women alike, and yet no alley has ever known the terrible quarrels ours has, nor have any people even been as divided by the controversy as we. And for every decent man, you will find 10 gangsters brandishing clubs and ready to pick a fight. These people are even used to buying their safety with bribes and their security with obedience in the basement and were severely punished for the smallest thing they said or did wrong or even for thinking something wrong. The strangest thing is that the people in the nearby alleys in Atuf, Kafir al-Zagari, in al-Darasa, and al-Husseinia envy us because of our alley's property and our tough men. They say property and a well-protected alley mean wealth and invincible protectors. All that's true, but they don't know that we're crushed by misery 
that we live in squalor with flies and lice, that we are content with crumbs, that we are half naked. They see our protector strut around on top of us and are struck with admiration. And our only comfort is to look up at the mansion and say in sorrow and pain, there is Gabalawi, the owner. He is our ancestor and we are his grandchildren. I've witnessed the recent period in the life of our alley, and I lived through the events that came about through the coming of Arafa, a dutiful son of our alley. It is thanks to one of Arafa's friends that I am able to record some of the stories of our alley. One day he said to me, You're one of the few who know how to write, so why don't you write down the stories of our alley? They've never been told in the right order, and even then, always at the mercy of the storyteller's whims and prejudices. It'd be wonderful if you wrote them carefully, all together so that people could benefit from them. And I'll help you out with what you don't know with inside info. I acted on his advice, both because it struck me as a good idea and because I loved the person who suggested it. I was the first in our alley to make a career out of writing, though it has brought me much contempt and mockery. It was my job to write the petitions and complaints of the oppressed and the needy. Although many wretched people seek me out, I am barely better off than our alley's beggars, though I am privy to so many of the people's secrets and sorrows that I have become a sad and broken-hearted man. But, but, I am not writing about myself or my troubles, which amount to nothing compared with those of our alley, our strange alley with strange stories. How'd it happen? What was it all about? And who were the children of our alley?